Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Talkin' Tunes. I am your host, Frank Walsh. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for all of the positive reviews that we received from our last couple of shows. As you know, we had Eileen Springer on here a couple of shows ago. And last time we had the Demented Poet Society with Roe and Rick and uh, David. So I want to thank you for all of those positive reviews. And I can assure you that going forward, in addition to today's show, you're going to be seeing a lot of great talent. So having said that, I would like to introduce to you my special guest today, a man who sings and writes, a man of wit and humor. And I would like to introduce to you to my hatted brother, Chuck Vermette. Nice to meet you, Frank. Nice How to be are you, here. Chuck? Welcome. Great to be here. Thank you for being on the show here. Um, after I saw Eileen's show, I, I wanted to do this. I'm well, glad you reached out to me. Thank you for doing well, that. Well, great. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, as you know, we, we like to bring some good music, and I had the good pleasure of listening to some of your songs on YouTube and some of the things that you had posted on Facebook. And you can chat a little bit about that later, where how the fans could hear a little bit of music. So, tell the folks at home about Chuck Vermette. I think that more I hear something Ralph Waldo Emerson said, who you are speaks so loudly, I don't hear what you're saying. <laughs> so I like to think I measure. I measure people by what they do uh -huh. and how they act, not ho how they are, who they say what they are. Okay, cool. And um, how long have you been playing the guitar and singing and uh, entertaining people? How long have I been? Two separate things. I've been playing since I was 13. If I ever start entertaining people, I'll let you know. Um, there goes the wit and the humor, folks. I told you, we're in for trouble here for the next 25 minutes. <laughs> I like your style, Chuck. <laughs> Self-deprecation. No, it's the only way I can survive. Sarcastic. Absolutely. What is there to be sarcastic about in this world, Frank? Um, I could think of one or 80 things. And I'm sure that you and I could have some great debates about some of the things that uh, you and I have kicked off, uh, talked about off air. Well, if I do the sports show, maybe we can do who's on first. Uh, I don't know who is. Who is on first? Correct. What's on first? No, what's on second? Oh, what's on second? Wrong show, folks. But, uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about your music. Um, how, uh, how would you describe your music, the type of style that you play? Again, re reiterating what I say, I just do it. Uh -huh. I do. I've been influenced by many things. I mean, my background, I started off like probably a few million kids in the late 1960s, early 70s. So I want to be like the Beatles and Bob okay. Dylan. And somewhere along the way, I, you know, learned, was formally trained as a classical guitarist. Um, Berkeley, big band arranging. Um, you, know, you went I, to Berkeley. I guess you, you couldn't get into a good school. I guess all the all the state <laughs> I, clues. I didn't actually go to Berkeley. State school, you know, state schools were filled. In the late 1970s, they had a correspondence course. Before they were a university, they were before they were a college. They were a school of music, and they had a correspondence course. And I was doing um, big band arranging. Nice. While they were doing. Um, well, I was getting my English degree at Stonehill College. Very cool. Out in Easton. And uh, you do an arrangement that I still use what they taught me to this day. And you write a big arrangement, you mail it to them, an instructor would mail it back to you. It was great. I did that while I was going to school. I am, um, for the last seven years or so, I've been a classically trained vocalist. I sing things in foreign languages and show music and classical music. But I still do, you know, I'm still rooted in the 60s music that I did I, you know, a lot of what I learned on guitar really was jazz, jazz chords, jazz structured. Mm -hmm. I liked a lot of the 70s progressive rock music, Steely Dan and Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, and Yes. And Great. Well, I think, uh, you know, having said that, you know, as you know, time runs away pretty quickly. So I think rather than talk a little bit about your music, uh, I think it's time for you to get up and maybe play a song. Uh, what do you think going to be playing this first song? I'm going to play something I just wrote. Okay. And it's called, innocuously enough, I love her. Okay. You know who you are, darling. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Rick Vermet singing, I love her. Chuck Vermet, just a... Yeah, what do I know? More than me. Now you've got to learn to aim higher in life.
I love her. Yes, I love her. We've screamed out in passion, screamed out in pain. Where she left in the rapture, I'd beg to remain. Cause I love her. We've rejoiced and we've cursed, seen our best, seen our worst, and I love her. When I stumbled into hell, it was then I could tell how I love her. Turn down the rapture, torn out in pain, left in the rapture, I chose to remain, cause I love her. If you don't understand, haven't been where I've been, I love her. If you've been where I've been, needn't say it again. Chuck, very nice. Come over here and grab a seat. Well done, well Thank done. You, I didn't know what to expect, and um, that was that was quite the beginning. Now, as I was listening to that, <clears throat> I almost heard three different types of types of music in here. I heard some a little just the classic chord. Then it seemed like you went into a little bit of Spanish. It seemed like there was a little bit of Latin or some Spanish in that. And then threw in some classical. Was, am I correct in that assessment or you tell me? Very correct. That's exactly what I was doing. Yeah, I, I could hear that. And, and as I said to other artists on the, on the show is that when I listen to music, I try to get their message and I try to understand what they're feeling. And I think that that song certainly conveys that. I was able to not only hear the message that you were delivering, but being entertained as well by the, the guitar licks. I mean, it was, it was very impressive the way that you were mixing up the, the styles of, of guitar. Now, is that something that you do in a lot of your music, or, or is that intentional? Or? It's very intentional. Very intentional, so. And it, uh, let's just say in some corners, it, I've been told it decreases my commercial potential. And, uh, Dead air is a no-no, but it would be the equivalent of how much I think of that <coughs> remark. Well, I could see that, you know, being played on alternative stations, you know, some of the college stations, WUMB, WERS, you know, some of the shows that go on at night, because as you say, there is some silence in that song, and, you know, most of the production people hate that. But um, I think that the style of that music and, you know, the message that it delivers and the virtuosity, if you would, of your guitar playing, Certainly, uh, you know, 
should be shared with the masses regardless of what these program directors say. I have had in the past, albeit the distant past, I have found a, a niche in alternative radio. In fact, one of the songs I'm going to play is an interesting story okay. behind the song, but I was a, I moved to Connecticut in the, um, in the spring of 1984. Moved or were on the lam? Moved or on the lam? Yeah, yeah. I told you, pay no attention to that picture in the post office. It's okay, not me. Okay, all right, all right. Just trying to clarify it for the audience, no, you know? No, that was not me. But I, I, was, I was down there, and I was living near my brother, and as a matter of fact, we had a duo together, and I was playing in a place, and I uh, met a bunch of his friends. We all, it was a wonderful time, and one of them came up to me, and I played one of these songs, and she said, Chuck, I've heard that before. Turned out she went to an area college. I had sent out a demo to them, had not thought about it for years, but she said, B Radio was playing it. Wow. She recognized Very nice. the song from hearing it ten years before. Now are you uh, you know, are you out on some of the music sites, you know, like the YouTube videos, or do you have any, you know, soundscape oh. or any of those things that you put your music out there? I've got a Reverb Nation site. Reverb Nation, yeah. And you know, Facebook I post a lot, a lot of my things. It's so much easier now to do that than right, it was. Right, right. <laughs> I remember when we first sending demos and you get these huge reels of tape. Yes. And you put them in metal canisters and you'd have to package them all up and you'd have to, you know, the postage itself for the, for the wrapping would be $2. Right, Just exactly. for the wrapping and now you just send a link to somebody and you're done with exactly. it. Exactly. Well, we could wrap forever, but as you can see, time is moving on. But I understand you have a couple of songs that you're going to be playing. Yes. And, um, you know, why don't you get yourself ready up there? And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be hearing uh, Chuck Vermette, a singer and a songwriter. And he is going to be playing a couple of songs for your entertainment. And by the end of the show, we'll have a chance to have him say where you could reach him on Facebook or how you could get a hold of some of his music. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Chuck Vermette. And I think I'll play that aforementioned song. It's called The Bellevue Rag. Great. Just been strapped down to the bed when you walked in the room. Even though straight jacketed you wiped away my gloom. But you are an outpatient while I'm in intensive care. If you just have a breakdown, then a lifetime we could share. I think it's love at first sight, though you're only a neurotic. There's something when I look at you that's helpful, erotic. But if you want to dance with me, you've got to be psychotic to do the Bellevue Rag. You got a bill that just won't quit while I am photogenic. But you have just a phobia while I am schizophrenic. Pretend that you're a paranoid as prone to acute panic. We'll do the Bellevue rag. Well, my roommate's a rat, except he thinks he's Genghis Khan. I will get him transferred and then we can get it on. And when you start delusions and hallucinating, you can move in with me, we'll start copulating. I you know that things could be much worse. You could have halitosis, leprosy, leukemia, or cystic fibrosis. I will bribe a doctor to say that you a psychosis. We'll do the Bellevue Rag. And then we'll write our congressman, my dearest Uncle Harry. He'll get a court injunction so the two of us can marry. Cause if it don't, I'll tell his wife about his secretary. Doing the Bellevue Rag. such fun. Last week I was Franklin, now this week I'm Jefferson. When you're schizo, you are anyone you want to be. So you be Cleopatra and I will be Mark Antony. I know that things could be much worse. You could have halitosis, leprosy, leukemia, or cystic fibrosis. I will bribe a doctor to say that you've a psychosis. We'll 
do the Bellevue rag. We'll do the Bellevue rag. We'll do the Bellevue rag. something completely different. This is based on a T.S. Eliot poem, The Wasteland, which in turn is based on the prophet Isaiah. It's called Something Bigger Than My Shadow. To try to say and guess through sorrow and distress keeps me from the path to carry on. Something bigger than my shadow Something bigger than my shadow Coming out to greet me With the dawn The timberland is falling A prophet's voice is calling There's nothing left to see here Move along Something bigger than my shadow Something bigger than my shadow Coming out to greet me With the dawn The shelter of the red rock And a fantasy Making straight a pathway So I thought But then there came a sentence Sorrow and repentance Not to be repeated Or forgot Another day is ending Another dream depending On whether I can lift my voice in song Something bigger than my shadow Something bigger than my shadow Coming out to greet me With the dawn Another day is ending, another dream depending on whether I can lift my voice in song. Something bigger than my shadow, something bigger than my shadow, coming out to greet me with a dawn. Something bigger than my shadow Something bigger than my shadow Coming out to greet me With the dawn Wow. Once again, Chuck. What a great combination of instrument and voice, how the two of them just came together. Beautiful stuff. Thank you, sir. Beautiful stuff. Well, folks at home, um, you know, we are running out of time, but before we get into uh, your next song and closing up, why don't you tell the folks at home about how they could reach you, maybe get into your Facebook page, or if they want to go out and check some of your music, or maybe talk about some of the places where you perform. I can be reached Reverb Nation, uh, Chuck Vermette Sr., not to be confused with my son, who is a much better musician <laughs> than I will ever be. Wow, lucky him. And, of course, I'm on Facebook, Chuck Vermette Sr. Welcome inquiries there. And I, pretty much I do coffee houses in the area and a lot of open mics. I, I like doing what I'm doing. Other than that, I have a rather sedentary life. Okay. A technical professional by trade. Mm -hmm. 
I think that that's, uh, that's something that we might want to save for another show because, uh, you know, hopefully you will come back and, and perform your magic again. But there's definitely a connection between your work and your music. And I think that we, you know, should have a little bit more time to talk about that because there's an interesting connection there. But uh, I want to go back to the songs that you just sang. And, uh, you know, you mentioned T.S. Eliot and the Wasteland. And you, know, you touched upon my favorite poet, you know, T.S. Eliot, uh, my favorite poet. And um, his poem is The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. It's one of my favorites, too. Let, Let us go song. then, you and I, when evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon the table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets of sawdust shells or whatever it is. And, oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit. And, and in the room, women come and go. Speaking of Michelangelo. I love that. That is, that is one of the most uh, beautiful poems ever written. And I don't think that a lot of people realize that a lot of musicians have taken titles of albums, influences of songs from uh, T.S. Eliot's work. The Almonds, for example, in Proof Rock, um, you know, Eat a Peach from the Almond Brothers. I did not know that. That I comes did not from, think of that. That comes from, from the end. T.S. Eliot, where it said, Do I dare walk with the, on the beach with my trousers rolled and drink coffee out of teaspoons, measure my life in teaspoons? Do I dare eat a peach? Yes. And I had heard that the Al Almond Brothers were influenced by that and took that as a name from uh, T.S. Eliot. Fascinating. I did not know that. Well, I am... Uh, mile wide inch deep when it comes to that kind of information but uh anyway i mean that that was just some beautiful music and as you can see time is winding down and we have probably enough time for you to do one more song before we close out so i think you're saving a little bit of a rocker for last yes i was well once again ladies and gentlemen um i present to you chuck vermette Ah, the transitions of live television. Ah, the transitions of live television. Talk among yourselves, folks. Uh. This is called Try to Fool God and God Fooled Me. Went off a road, but the creek was too deep. Tried to climb the hill, but the hill was too steep. Should have stayed on the road that's narrow and straight. Should have paid the toll, but I didn't want to wait. Now I'm stuck in a rut, and I can't break free. Tried to fool God, and God fooled me. pointed to the verse, said I had no choice. Then he went and spent my tithe on a new Rolls Royce. The fear of judgment took my soul and took my mind. Now the judgment that I need's been left behind. The tomb's been open, but I still can't see. Tried to fool God and God fooled me. He's a God of mercy, so my friends all say. He's also one of justice, and it's time for me to pay. Talking about things that I don't know. Going to places I should not go. Now they tell me I'm a charmer and a damn good flirt So why am I trapped, overwhelmed and hurt Following her like a lambing to the sea Tried to fool God and God fooled me He's a God of mercy, so my friends all say He's also one of justice and it's time for me to pay Talking about things that I don't know. Going to places I should not go. Well, they tell me I'm a charmer and a damn good flirt. 
So why am I trapped, overwhelmed and hurt, following her like a lamb to the sea? Tried to fool God and God fooled me. Tried to fool God and God fooled me. Tried to fool God. Tried to fool God. Tried to fool God. And God fooled me. Wow, Chuck. Once again, once again, and uh, you were going to be finishing up your singing with a bang. That was once again a song that showed your, your vocal range and your virtuosity on the guitar. And uh, great, great stuff. And unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I think, you know, folks at home, I think that you can see that there is a lot more to Chuck Vermet than his music. I think that there is, uh, you know, Many, there are many things that we could probably explore, and I hope you would come back and maybe talk a little bit more. You know, it's obvious that there is some deep roots to your music, some influences that come from your heart that you, you know, that you put into your music, and I think we should explore that a little bit more sometime. You know, I'd be delighted. Because it's, it's, it's obvious that there's a lot of depth in the music, and, and I'd be fascinated to learn where it all comes from. Thank you so much. You're I'm welcome. To do that. You're welcome. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, you have been listening to Chuck Vermette, and uh, he does play around at different places. And before we go, why don't you give yourself a little bit of plug because you just landed a play role. Talk a little oh, bit about that. Oh, uh, Company Theater in Norwell, um, 1776. Yeah. Which will be there in July, and tickets do go fast. If you know anything about Company Theater, it's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing. I'm playing the role of Lewis Morris. If anybody knows the show, he's... The one that says throughout the play, New York abstains, courteously. <laughs> and true, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, not only will you get to see Chuck perform in 1776, you'll also get to see uh, a stage where our esteemed director of SMAC performs. He produces and he's been in a lot of plays down there. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in today. And Chuck, thank you so much for being Certainly. on. It's a pleasure to be here, Frank. So for Chuck Vermette, I am your host, Frank Walsh. And as always, tune in and tune on. <laughs>